Oh, good morning, people in Canberra, and uh, good evening to, sorry, got it the wrong way around, good morning to people in <laughs> Copenhagen, and good, morning, good, good evening to people in Canberra. Um, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to speak, uh, and uh, thank you for the hospitality we've received in Copenhagen, it's been absolutely wonderful. Now, aims and scope of food security uh, I thought it was a little bit ambiguous as to whether I should be talking about uh, the journal or be talking more generally about uh, food security. So I thought I would do both, or attempt to do both. Um, so what is food security? Uh, I think I could do no better than to uh, quote the World Food Summit uh, in 1996. Uh, food security exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for a healthy and active life. I don't think I can improve on that. Um, now, how did the journal come into being? Well, it's this man, Norman Borlaug. He's a Nobel um, Peace Prize winner in 1970 because of his work on the, uh, uh, the Green Revolution wheat. He's the father of the Green Revolution. Um, and he came to Edinburgh in 1998 and challenged the International Society of Plant Pathologists uh, by saying, essentially, what are you guys doing about food security? And we all thought, mm, what are we doing? Uh, and so there was a conference in Bangkok the following year, which was chaired by Peter Scott. Here he is. Um, and Peter and I have known each other a long time, and we were always worrying a bit about this challenge that uh, 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 Borlaug had made to, to the International Society. And uh, this saw as one of the products, there were several other ones, but one of the products was this uh, paper that we wrote for uh, the annual review of phytopathology. Um, so uh, the idea of publishing a bit was in our minds um, and uh, we started thinking well do people actually really publish on uh, food security is this in the are these words in the title and uh, we started thinking but well perhaps a journal might be something to think about and in fact uh, my wife sitting in the audience made the crucial uh, remark um, why don't you start a journal? I'm sure she regrets it because it takes a lot of time. Um, but um, anyway, the answer was that uh, food security articles uh, are all over the show, or they were between 2005 and 2008. Uh, the color codes are the, the olive. Um, this is a point. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, I think there's a pointer. Um, uh, the, the olive is, is economics, blue is water, green is uh, agriculture. Uh, sorry, red is agriculture, green is nutrition, and yellow is climate, and the pink is, is general. So um, these were uh, papers, uh, journals rather, 23 journals there, uh, which had published in that time period uh, five or more papers with the, type, with the words food and security in the title. So they're widely distributed. Why not put them together? So... Uh, we wrote a proposal, and Peter used to travel the world a lot, met various uh, World Food Prize laureates who said, what a good idea. And Springer also seemed to say, what a good idea. So what are the objectives of the journal? Uh, well, they are to define the constraints, physical, biological, socioeconomic, and political, that prevent people from obtaining a diet that is sufficient the nutritious to allow full development of their physical and mental potential. And then the second thing is, of course, to address the means by which these constraints can be overcome. So uh, the journal went into production in 2009. Uh, Springer said, you'll have a, a, a quarterly journal, uh, 80 pages each, um, and as you can see, we never had as few as that. And by 2013, they said, well, perhaps you should actually think about having a, a, a bi-monthly. So we now have six issues a year. And the last two years, we've had over 900 pages. 
Um, so now turning to uh, the well uh, to food security on a more global scale, uh, it's a rather appalling fact that over half the world's population uh, has the wrong diet. Uh, there are about 800 million who are hungry, 1.5 billion are overweight, and then there are these people with so-called hidden hunger, 2 billion of them. These pe are people who lack one or more nutrients, uh, uh, micronutrients uh, or vitamins. So we obviously haven't, haven't got it right. Um, we can ask the question, where do these people live? And most of them live in sub-Saharan Africa and also in, in South Asia. Uh, the, the darker the, the yellowish color, uh, the worse uh, their nutrition. Um, so there is a problem. And in fact, surprisingly, maybe to some, hunger and obesity may coexist even in the same family. Now, I know these two gentlemen aren't actually in the same family, but uh, 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 nevertheless, it, it, it makes the point. Um, so I'd like to ask three questions. Uh, the first one is, what is agriculture for? Secondly, what is an appropriate diet? What should we be eating? And I've heard uh, yesterday evening, and perhaps sampled, uh, uh, something of the Nordic diet, uh, which is of uh, considerable interest. Um, and then how do we achieve the World's Summit's 1996 definition of all people at all times having physical and economic access to sufficient and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for a healthy and active life. And we should add now, within the Sustainable Development Goals. Well, uh, we can ask the question, is agriculture for this? Uh, corn is good for you, uh, the, the, the man at the pump is saying, uh, putting in ethanol into this, this guy's vehicle. Well, okay, uh, about 30% of the price spike in 2008 in, in, in cereals was due to the fact that there was diversion of, of these products to making ethanol to put in vehicles. Um, so uh, we'll ask the next question, what is an appropriate diet? Well, this lady's got it licked. Uh, she says, if I eat as much chocolate as I can, then all my desires for naughty foods like Pe uh, peanuts and uh, uh, um, uh, pizza and so forth disappear. Um, so uh, we really have to concentrate on this question of availability of foods for appropriate diets. Um, and well, where do we get it from? Agriculture. And so agriculture must produce the ingredients for appropriate diets. In other words, it's got to be nutrition sensitive. Um, currently, the world depends for about 80% of its calories on just four crops, rice, wheat, maize, and soya bean. This is a desperately narrow base. And I'd like to uh, commend Fiona, the previous speaker, saying that we should be diversifying. Yes, we, indeed we should. Um, what do we need uh, greater diversity for? Well, we need it for better nutrition, and we need it as a hedge against uh, environmental alteration. That is bound, um, that is bound to come, uh, not, and it's not only a question of climate, as I will um, mention later on, uh, it's also a question of all the, uh, um, the biological factors that are going to affect our crops. So, we can ask the question, who makes food available? Well, of course, it's the farmer. And I'm going to promote the farmer. Um, now, I think the farmer has a very difficult job. Uh, you can see these guys here who, are the, uh, who provide the inputs, the seed, the, the, the chemicals, the fertilizer, and they seem to be laughing all the way to the bank. And one guy is saying, I'm glad I don't have to do that, meaning the job of the farmer. And then we have the processor. Well, that actually can be 
uh, made rather larger, uh, and I think there should be a sort of chain off to the left, which is the value chain. Um, so, you know, to get to the chocolate uh, that uh, perhaps our friend, the lady, likes, uh, there's a value chain, and people are making money all along it. But the farmer has to produce the raw material. And um, uh, I'd like to um, quote from David Barling and Jessica Duncan's paper. She and he say, no raw material, no profit. Now, uh, too often that can be translated into, or, tran or paraphrased, into no um, raw material, uh, no food. Um, oh, I mean, it's two minutes, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, farmers grow plants under conditions over which they have little control. Um, soil infertility, um, water, too much, too little, temperature, too high, too low, pests, diseases, and unfavorable economic conditions, which I think is more of an appeal to the audience here. Um, I want to leave you with a couple of um, uh, 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 diseases which affect a, a very important crop, not important in, in, in Denmark, or in, in, uh, in Australia, but uh, very important on the African subcontinent uh, and elsewhere, in fact. Uh, it's cassava, it's a root crop, and uh, about 800 million people are dependent upon it. Um, it is getting savaged by diseases, uh, two virus diseases only, I shall mention. This is cassava mosaic disease, um, and if you want to read a bit more about it, there is a paper in Food Security by Claude Fouquet and company. Uh, and uh, this is doing a great damage. Uh, in fact, it's a combination of two viruses which are uh, um, synergistic, so they're uh, accentuating the disease. Uh, the actual uh, part you eat is, is the tuber, which is here on the right. Um, and you can see this is looking uh, very nasty. You wouldn't want to eat that. It's suffering from cassava brown streak, and it is uh, um, transmitted by the white fly, uh, a vector. And this little beast uh, has sometimes, uh, the population has sometimes increased about a hundredfold. Um, so it's very efficiently spreading these very nasty viruses around in, in East Africa. So um, what is to be done? To my mind, the answer is agriculture research. And particularly plant research. Why plant research? Well, you only have to ask yourself the question, what do I eat? And even if you're you know, an avid carnivore, uh, you're, the things that you're eating have, have eaten plants. So plants are the primary producers. So I'm going to leave you with two quotes. Um, one is rather ancient. Agriculture comes first among human activities. Without it, there would be no merchants, no courtiers, no kings, no poets, no philosophers. The only true form of wealth is that produced by the soil. I think had economists uh, been around, that they would probably have featured, because that was made, the remark was made about 200 years ago by Frederick the Great, or more than 200 years ago. Um, and, and there he is. Um, there's now the last sentence, I think, will appeal to the next speaker, um, Jane, because uh, she's uh, a soil scientist. Um, <coughs> And I shall end with this final quote. Access to high quality diverse diets is an essential basis for tackling all forms of malnutrition. So attention should be paid to the quality and sustainability of agricultural systems as the key to supporting multiple nutritional goals. Thank you very much. <laughs>